Hello, this is old Mr. Kent of MrKent.com. And if you live in an area like I do in Arizona here where the temperatures get very hot in the summertime and you can generally only fly in the morning, uh, <clears throat> battery temperature for your drone becomes a little more of a concern than if you don't live in such a hot climate because you can't fly very long until uh, your battery gets, uh, <laughs> gets too hot and it destroys the battery. And wait, lately we've been having some really hot days, so I fly in the morning like I'm doing here. But uh, it, before the, the uh, firmware upgrade, which came along a month or two ago, this is August of 2020, uh, all you had to do in order to uh, find out the battery temperature was to tap on the battery symbol uh, up at the top of the screen, and it would give you, uh, it would put up a display of the current battery temperature. But since the firmware upgrade, when you tap on that fancy little battery symbol, you don't get the battery temperature. You get the actual uh, information on about when you're gonna, when the battery's gonna die and things like that. So uh, like if we tap on that now, we get uh, until return to home and so forth. Back in June, I uh, put up a video where if you tap on the battery, this was before the upgrade, you got the temperature. And so, um, uh, after the upgrade, I kept getting this, and I kept, I kept forgetting when I got back on the ground, where do you go to find the battery temperature? Well, it's in the upper right-hand corner. You click on the, you tap on the three dots, and uh, scroll down, because you're in the safety menu, and there's the battery temperature over there on the right-hand side, 29.2 degrees, and it's increasing as I fly. So uh, I thought maybe people would like to know <laughs> where to find that battery temperature, especially if you live in a very warm climate. So uh, anyway, I hope that's, that's helpful. And uh, uh, I promise that in my next video, I would tell a story, which we'll get to here in just a minute. Uh, this uh, video was taken the, the morning after we had a, um, a monsoon storm of uh, rain, wind, dust, uh, thunder, lightning, and uh, I don't know what this was, that, what they were growing in this field. It looks like some kind of grain, but uh, I think probably it got pretty well destroyed in the previous storm that we had. Uh, if you check out my previous video, uh, which was taken after we had such a storm or that uh, it took the took the, uh, the roof off of the construction that we were making uh, for the addition to my son's shop. But uh, as you can see, uh, this is looks like some kind of grain. And uh, so uh, I think it's probably uh, not, uh, not much good after two storms. But <clears throat> the story, I was going to tell you a story about flying in the rain. And, but I have to start that out with a little different story because uh, the, the, uh, I have to have a story that goes before the story about flying in the rain. So let's get started on that. GPS nowadays is so, so uh, easy to use and uh, everything is so simple, but when uh, back when I was flying my plane years ago, they didn't have GPS and they had a, a system called the Loran system and it wasn't real reliable. My brother got a little RAN receiver and put it in his plane, and it would tell you pretty much where you were on the globe. Is that that's what it was for? And so uh, he got uh, he got that. I never got it because I didn't think it was too reliable. But finally, they came out with GPS uh, receivers for uh, for aircraft. And uh, oh, you see that tree there. Um, one of the things I want to find out is I want to find out how tall that tree is. And so in order to figure out how tall an object is, and this is from way back when I used to fly aircraft and want to know if I wanted to uh, like fly over the top of a mountain or something. But um, anyway, so uh, when GPS came out, well, what I'm going to do here, let's just take time and I'll show you. I'm going to drop down to where the top of the tree is even with the horizon. When, uh, If you want to find out how tall a pole is or something, you, you come down until the top of that object is even with the horizon, and then you look down, 
at your height, your altitude, and like it's 74 feet. So that tree is roughly 74, 75 feet high. So now when I fly around, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that uh, because it's real close to home there, I'll make sure that I'm uh, at least 75 feet <laughs> and I won't run into it. So uh, now we'll keep on flying and back to the story. So when GPS first came out for aircraft, it was just a little uh, unit about the size of your cell phone and it had a little two inch window in it and you could program it to go between point A and point B but you didn't have the fancy colored maps, you didn't have uh, much of any nap map, you just had a line and uh, some data information on uh, estimated time of arrival, you know, ETA and stuff like that. So it was useful and uh, when my before my uh, dad died, we, uh, we, I lived in uh, Spokane. I had lived in Pasco, Washington, and I lived in Spokane. And uh, I would, uh, w we would always go, if he was in the hospital and was sick, well, we'd always make the trip over to see how he was doing. So on one of those trips, I went over to, uh, he was in the Puyallup Hospital over in Western Washington. And uh, so while I was over there, I went over to Boeing Field and I purchased uh, one of the first GPS receivers and uh, so I could use it when I was flying because it was much more accurate than the, the RAN system. But it was just, uh, they were pretty, pretty new. And, uh, uh, but anyway, so what I did was I bought that. And then uh, uh, I don't remember all the details, but I had, uh, I was headed to Spokane, Washington from, from uh, Boeing Field. But I had to stop in Pasco to pick up my my wife, and I don't remember the details of how come that was taking place, but doesn't matter. I I uh, used my GPS unit for the first time, going from Boeing Field in Seattle to uh, Pasco Airport, which is now called the Tri Cities Airport, and it was it was pretty neat because I just had to follow. Uh, I could see where I was on this little map and. Uh, so it was it was fun, and so when we when I landed in in Pasco to pick up my wife, uh, she had uh, purchased a uh, a hamburger and a shake, and so while I was waiting for for her to show up at the airport, I went ahead and programmed my first program flight on my GPS unit to fly from Pasco, Washington, to Spokane, Washington, which was uh, only about an hour flight. And so uh, uh, she got in a plane, I taxied out, took off, set, uh, set the, uh, the GPS to, to, uh, to track me. And, and uh, so I took off, climbed out. When I got to altitude, I opened up my hamburger and started eating it and I uh, drinking my milkshake, just really enjoying it. And then realized halfway to Spokane that I had no idea where I was. <laughs> so, that was my first mistake, is if I would have needed to call uh, for help, I couldn't have told them where I was. So I had the GPS unit, <clears throat> and uh, uh, then, as, uh, oh, I don't know how many, how long it was later, but I was living in Spokane. I was looking for another job, and my nephew, uh, my my niece's husband, uh, he uh, said there was a job up in up in uh, in Yakima, Washington. And he said I should go apply for it. It was for an electronic technician. So we took off and um, uh, flew to Yakima. We stayed at his place and uh, went in for a, a working interview. And there was another guy there. Uh, he was young. He was like, uh, I was in my 50s and he was uh, late 20s, uh, early 30s. And he was there for a working interview. So um, I uh, did the interview and then... When we took, well, first of all, when I came in to land, the weather was bad that, that weekend or wherever it was, and uh, uh, got into a downdraft and uh, really had a hard time making it to the, to the, uh, in, to the uh, airstrip, the Yakima Airport. But that's another story. So anyway, uh, we took off to fly home, and the weather wasn't all that great. Um, it was, uh, like I said, when I flew down there, the weather was bad and it actually got into a, what they call a microburst, which pushed my plane down as I was coming in to land and I had to fight, the, just really fight 
to uh, keep from crashing into the ground. Uh, uh, that happened to a, a Delta airline plane in Texas and it killed several people. It was an airliner. So anyway, uh, that was an experience I had never had before. So flying home, the weather wasn't all that great and we took off from Yakima. We hard started heading towards Spokane and I was using my little GPS receiver to, to get us where we needed to go. And so uh, we flew along and did just fine. We got, uh, we got up near Spokane and of course it, it was uh, starting to rain really uh, before we got there, it started to rain and it, we had to uh, get down uh, below the level of the clouds. Oh, by the way, as you can see through the window on the construction there, the interior is now painted white and uh, so we're moving forward with that and there's my son opening up his shop door. So anyway, we were coming into Spokane and it would start pouring down rain and the clouds were low, so we had to get down below them. And that area of Spokane, I kept my plane in a little field just north of Spokane. And that area is made up of a lot of little hills and valleys. And so uh, I just watched the little, stayed on the little line as best I could on the GPS. And we got, it was like we were going through a tunnel <laughs> because we had to, it was a, like a may, a tunnel with a maze going between building or going between um, buildings, go, going between mountains and going down valleys. And, but the problem was, is with pouring down rain, you couldn't see out the front very well. And then because of the GPS being a new technology, the GPS, because of the storm, the clouds were black over us. It was pouring down rain and the GPS quit because <laughs> it lost contact with the satellites. So now uh, we were, I know we were, had been headed uh, in a northeast direction. So I just started uh, flying along uh, and, and if I came to a dead end, I turned around, went back the other way and found another route that would uh, take me between the hills and along a, uh, you know, above a valley. And uh, there's just a lot of little hills and valleys there and uh, pouring down rain and I looked and looked and finally saw something I uh, was familiar with that was close to the little airport where I kept my plane. So I knew I was getting close and uh, kept flying towards the northeast from that area and uh, finally there up ahead of us was the, well, I mean we weren't, we were like maybe 300 feet above the ground or so by the time we got there because we just had to fly so low. But uh, it was it was rainy, it was dark, <laughs> our GPS quit, and uh, we had a hard time, but we made it. So I want to thank you for watching, and God bless. <laughs>